So what I would recommend we do um, is to eat pedo coffee because it really helps to have people make comments as well. Uh, uh, it's refresh. Refresh. Uh, session is refresh. Refresh in the web. So let's make sure we state what the problem is and make sure we agree with that, which I believe, as Tom Tech put it, and Aaron, I'd like to make sure you keep me honest here, is we'd like to discuss the onboarding flow for what we'll call Gen 2 users. Historically, the web page has been for Gen 1 and what we would call Gen 1.5, and I would even argue that it's not very good at that. Um, I've mean, tripped over it myself many times, and I think the goal here is to kind of get people on board more quickly. Um, does that make sense? Does anybody have any issues with that? I want to make sure that we're not fighting each other. We're disagreeing with the overall question. It seems reasonable to me. Okay. Anybody? I would argue, let's make sure we define what Gen 2 is. I would argue there's two categories of Gen 2. Gen 2 would be someone who is not very... Oh, Gen 2. Okay. Um, someone who does not want to program, but is not afraid of getting their hands a little bit dirty. I would also argue that they're not quite sold on the value proposition yet either. They haven't been steeped in this. So one of the things I talked to Tontech about it was that we should probably have a stronger introduction as to what is at stake. And then we get into kind of a, here's the steps that you can take. Yeah. Can I ask, can I add one more feature of Absolutely. Gen 2? Yeah. I would make the assumption that they are not steeped in open source culture. Right. Um, because I think sometimes the assumption is, even if you don't know about any web, you understand how open source projects usually work. But I think Gen 2 generally does not. OK, plus one. Yeah, thank you. Can we also talk about what's Gen 3? Because I'm afraid there's a, we will slide Gen 2 into Gen 3 if we're not careful. I would argue a Gen 3 is someone who would go to, who wants to use email, and they go to Hotmail. That to me is a Gen 3 user. In other words, it's completely turnkey. You know, they just, there's just no work at all. They just decide to do the service. Maybe not Hotmail, but Gmail. 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 Um. <laughs> Gmail. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But it like, would have been Hotmail. Yeah, it would have been. All right. Um, um, I think there's someone that would be comfortable setting up something that follows a traditional user experience flow. So yeah. give me your email, give me your name. Now you have a thing. Yes. But not someone that is going to do name server. Yes. The, the critical difference to me is that a Gen 2 person is willing to do some configuration, right? Is willing to poke around a little bit, is willing to do a little bit of work. If that's a fair way of, of saying. Okay, cool. Um, that being the case, um, I would argue that there's two categories of things we can talk about. And again, I'm just trying to bucket the conversations. One is how do we describe the value, and then how do we describe the work? And those are the two things. Contact Felix at. Maybe that's just like resting set face or something. <laughs> um, I am going to disagree slightly with your analogy for Gen 3. Okay. Because I think the fully turnkey thing that you described mm -hmm. describes Gen 4. Okay. Where fair enough. I just I didn't even know there was Gen 4. <laughs> yeah. So so tell me what you what's the because. The, so, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're critical. Um, personal domains managed by third parties. So the idea is that Gen 1 is, we know what Gen 1 is. Right. You're comfortable doing at least some development hacking work or even... You will fix bugs it. if you find them. Potentially, yeah. 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 Like yeah. development. Gen 2, we talked about it's like C channel. I think Lily's description was really good. That, and like, I think we have a pretty good understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know HTML, CSS, maybe you don't. Maybe you're willing to tweak themes, maybe not. Right. That's there. Um, the other distinguishing factor about Gen 2 is I think that people that are, are like pretty serious like content people, mm -hmm. like journalists, bloggers, they, they're, they're already like in this mindset of like, I am an online person. Right, yeah. Um, and, okay, sounds great. And to me, the difference between three and four is, is as you say here, personal domains managed by third parties. So if I want to set something up on DigitalOcean, I am a Gen 3. Yes, right. or on DigitalOcean. You know, I would say DigitalOcean, I would say Tumblr, something that is a service, mm -hmm. but you still okay, have with known. Domain. With known. With known, WordPress.com. Micro.blog. Micro yeah. Those are all Gen 3s. Right? Yeah. Yes. Are. And even um, 
Wix.com, mm -hmm. I would say it's Gen 3. Okay. Especially if it's like your own domain. Well, this is very yeah. powerful stuff because it helps us focus and it helps us say no to certain features. And the people that are doing Gen 3, absolutely no code. Absolutely no code. No, no code at all. Yeah. Not even HTML, CSS. <laughs> right, like, right. No, no, like, maybe no. Markdown. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe, yeah. yeah, and in fact, Markdown without links or images, like, mm -hmm. because that's basically code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. Markdown, never mind Markdown I got design. It. Got it. Okay. And this, this is folks like, they've got a profession, they've got a small business, um, like, the web is not their, their identity. They're doing a personal domain mm -hmm. or business domain because they have to for their business. Right. It's not because the, they're not like a blogger where it's like, yeah, this is me online. I think that's a... Uh, the drag queens that want their presence off of Facebook because Facebook shuts it down would be a good example. They want some sort of management of their identity but are not comfortable setting up their identity. Yeah. So like, and they want maybe a pseudonymous identity yeah. because they have to have... They, they want to have some identity online because they have to more than they're passionate about. I think we're sliding into a question I want to bring up, which is my wife, I, I, I was a good example, is someone who's technically adept but not a programmer, went to Squarespace to set up her business. Yeah. Um, and her the main value to it was that A, it gave her a template, but B, it gave she just signed up for her domain and it took care of the domain as well. Yes. So no cPanel, right? And right. So, right. Um, and no, nothing like that. So it was a combination of all those factors. She just typed it, she got the domain from Google Domains, she typed it in, did, did whatever email thing, and then it just magically worked, right? And if you asked her now how she got her domain, she wouldn't have any idea, right? It just it was just part of the flow. She just followed it, and yet, and then she and, and she has no idea that that Squarespace does really crappy markup, right? She doesn't care, sure. right? Sure. And so it does that. Same um, thing with like you know, I know yoga teachers that get a Wix.com account, you know, a paid Wix.com account, where they by paying you can get them to host your domain, and no like no Wix.com URLs are ever exposed right. for their pages or permalinks or anything. It just looks like hosting. Too. Yep. But it's super friendly hosting. It's not cPanel. Like, yeah. The only concern I have is I believe there's a fundamental difference in what you want to do with your website. I think a lot of us, I would call our creating effectively personal stream. It contains all of our stuff. We want people yeah. to see our stuff. My wife has a static site. Sure. Right. And I do believe there's a huge range of people in between. So to a certain extent, we're creating our own personal Twitter, for lack of a better word. There's a better way to put that. But like, and so we have sites that are just basically content, and we can filter it. But it's really a personal content. social media. Personal feed? social media. Yeah. Is feed the word you want? Feed. Yes. We're doing so. so we're stream. But the reason why I'm drawing this careful consideration, though, is the minute if you're willing to be a stream, you're willing to have more rails on what your formatting is. The minute you start getting into more two or possibly three, this actually came out of a conversation that we had, um, about the idea that the minute you get more creative people, they now start making intense demands of how the content is laid out. It has nothing to do with us. And it has everything to do with making the situation significantly more complicated. I think those are solidly Gen 3. Okay, well, then, then that's good, good. So then we put them on. Because uh, those kinds of demands, they are still like, they're not happy with what social networks do. Right. To be perfectly blunt, right? Those people have like higher demands than just people that just use social networks. Right. And that's where uh, I think the distinction with Gen three and Gen four comes through. Okay. I want to get to I want to get to some real work. I just want to make sure that we're kind of because it, I think it's really critical that because I'm so sorry. Lillian. Lillian, I should. Lillian, you brought up a lot of points about people really wanting to do very custom, specific, artist-focused content. Carousels, uh, comic, comics. In the sake of to finish this fifty minutes, is that off the table? I wouldn't say that's off the table because that sounds like Gen Three. Well, but it, uh, today we're focusing on Gen Three. Well, so in our, in, in our like brief discussion that mm -hmm. we talked about, we wanted to see can we turn like the Indie Web homepage into a Gen Two focused, but then links off to where Gen 1 or Gen 3 people Got can it. find help. Right. So okay. in other words, we're not going to make it like for those people, but at least if they are one of those people, we can steer them yeah. to where they can get help. Do Got you want to get involved in development? Go here. Yes. Are you, are you, is this too much for you? Here's with them. <laughs> like with that kind of, yeah. you know, here, like. Here's with WordPress.com. Yeah. Here's a bunch of like, okay. Know, 
So, the, so the, let me set up a straw man then, because I think I heard you right. So let me then set up a straw man. I think he's and basically Gen Four. We don't. I, yeah. My proposals. We don't even bother trying to fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's fine. Right now, I think there. what we heard in our WordPress blog is that we still have a ways to go to actually keep the wheels on the car. Right now. In WordPress. Yeah. In everything that we do, it still is too hard, and we are making it a little bit too too difficult. So let's have one year, let's have 2017 be the year where we actually make this stuff kind of work more seamlessly and not worry about making this get the whole world involved. Let's just get our shit together and work with two, potentially three, and then really nail down WordPress plugins, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if that's the case, then I would argue that we have a good introduction to the top of the site. From Lily's point of view, we should probably have maybe a few more value statements, which we can talk about which kind of then make sure that people understand really why we're here. And then we would then say, by the way, just want to kick the tires? Here's micro.blog. Here's, right, yeah. right. It's just, if, you, if you just want to see what this is like, go here and have some fun. If you really want to set it up yourself, here's the two, solu here's the two, one, two suggestions we make, and here's the, the steps for each one. Straw man, does that make sense? I like the kick the tires as the first thing, because yep. I think that's going to appeal to Gen 3 people. Right. And I like giving them a chance to like, you want to kick the tires? Best of breed right now is micro.blog. Right, because it's, they're supporting it, it's all this super, stuff. And tell them a little bit. It's super easy. You get an account and you can just, and make sure you try these three things. Right. And give them a little like, do this. So yeah. it's not just simply a link, it's also kind of a little bit of a try. Right. Yeah, and I think for Gen 2, uh -huh. like the best solutions we have are, are known in WordPress. Exactly. And I agree with what, exactly, everything you just said about we still have some what did you call it? Work to do for WordPress, like keep the wheels on. Keep well, the wheels on the car. It's, yeah. You would love to have it so that the Gen 2 people can say, well, that was easy. And nobody at this table can say that right yeah. now. That is Not a, one. Yeah, that's a great problem statement. <laughs> yeah. For like a Gen 2 person to show up to indieweb.org, go, oh, that is me. Yeah. Click a couple of things and go, okay, I'll try that. And be like, my goodness, that worked. Yeah. That that's kind of like the ideal. I'm kind of idealizing the UX that they I want them to have, and then to be like, what else can I do here? Right. And then start like going deep dive or like, you know what? Thanks. Now I can go focus on what I love. Yeah. Instead of focusing on the tools. Mm -hmm. Focus. Focus on what you love. So, for example, as a small tiny taste of how this this is something that does not get go into the blog, I don't go into the wiki, but actually goes into the tool in the WordPress thing. We talk about the fact that the Plugin, the master plugin for IndieWeb should have an onboarding flow that says, "What kinds of stuff do you want to share? What goes on? You know, what kind of navigation do you want, or whatever the flow is going to be, so that you can literally kind of go click, 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 click." Because what we discovered in the WordPress thing is to really do it right, you need a static page. And to do a static page, you have to like create it yourself. Well, that's ridiculous. That should just be done for you. So that's the kind of stuff that we won't even put in the wiki. The plugin will take care of it for you. Right? It should. Yes. Right. And so that's the subtask that we've we we have we've action items to, to work on that actually yeah. right after this week. So, um, but what's nice about that is if we get the plugin to work like that, it makes the wiki so much easier. It says, oh, you know, go get a WordPress, okay, um, install this plugin, follow the prompts, <laughs> done, <laughs> for the most part. So WordPress now will become significantly easier. Okay, can I ask a backup question though, which is. How do Gen 2 people set up WordPress? I assume it's not FTP. I assume it's more like DigitalOcean or something. Sorry? There is some FTP involved with the plugins, at least. The new plugins, I was told, no longer require them. OK, well, that's recent change. OK, let's let's assume that there's no FTP, no command line. The goal is there's no FTP, right? For Gen 2 people, I would say yes. 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 So to me, what I'd like to say is. I don't even say requirement. Yeah. So let's, let's, I'm sorry. For a Gen 2 person who is taking notes, yeah, I was going to say someone. There's notes coming in here. I I would say. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say. Um, I, I'm just going to start saying steps for Gen 2 WordPress setup. Okay, and so to me, what are the steps? But I think you have to assume that they that they do want a domain name. So get get a domain name. Right. Um, that they're willing to actually pay for hosting. Um, and then they are willing. Yeah. Channel. Hello? Hello? Hi. <laughs> well, another assumption is they're okay with cPanel, and there's a WordPress installer in cPanel. Yes, they can use, they're okay with using cPanel. Yeah. And hopefully there's a WordPress checkbox or something in cPanel. It still doesn't have the well, it's, installed. Yeah, if you're using something that has some sort of native 
actually a single one, one click install. Uh, something that's useful if we're pointing people to WordPress mm -hmm. is pointing out the hosts where that do have one click installs. Well, that's WordPress. what I was going to get at, which is, first of all, this is the flow for WordPress. Yeah. Um, I think it's okay for us to be opinionated and say, here's three WordPress sites that will make your life really easy. So we can be a little opinionated and say, you know, pick these. I think we can. I think we should have some rough criteria. Like, if your hosting provider that has a cPanel with a one-click WordPress install, that's the bar, minimum bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then on top of that, they we, give money to Humber website. It would so, be even nicer if they had one-click installs that installed the IndieWeb plugins, whatever that means. Right. So that a Gen two person didn't have to go hunt. Them. Well, it would or be follow our, our follow our like fifteen or, step or process. It was, yeah, or it was a recommended path. Well, like Jeff okay, so let's let's rephrase this. How many WordPress hosting sites tick all of our boxes? My guess is zero. Exactly. That was what, that was what they have to right. Well, we know that DreamHost at least has a one click install for WordPress. It does, but it doesn't for your next dex escalation, which is that's a wish list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. I guess my point was, if we're really clear what this criterion is. This might be a checklist we will share with other hosting sites to say you can do this and we will promote it. Yeah, Not yeah. that we have that much clout, but it's just like a nice thing well, to say. What we end up doing is saying you want to get set up, get a domain name, get a hosting provider, like try one, try you know, company A, company B, or C more. Yeah. And and basically we pick, like you said, curate who's company A and company B. Yeah. Based on like how easy C panel, one click install stuff they right. are. And the C more link has everything else that qualifies. And then we say, and then we might say, and if you want to get on this list, here's what it takes as a hosting company. Yep. Here's what we want to see you support. Right. And, and I'm, I'm, someone's running down here, DreamHost and Reclaim. Is that correct? <laughs> are those the two for the moment? And just sorry, placeholders. Those are just. We know those have one plug installs. That's great. Okay. Let's just start with two to do that. Two is great because people like, like if we make it just like three choices, like right. choice A, choice B, C more, then right. people can decide like. Now, what I will argue, as, as a product person, I would argue that get a domain name should have a sub-page that says, let me tell you about getting a domain name. Yeah. You know, everything from TLDs to how hard it is to find it to a recommend, for example, I just recommend uh, one that just handles it really well, makes payment really easy, and so forth. Same thing. So same idea. Yeah. We'd have some criteria yeah. where... Um, well, and I think uh, we have some stuff buried in the wiki, but there's some stuff that I think is really helpful, like... People that regularly get top-level domains know that .ly is Libya, and therefore you can't have things that right. the country of Libya considers objectionable content. Right. But people that might not do that on a regular basis might go get a .ly and put their direct link website on it and get it shut down because it's homosexual content. And so, like, the that kind of stuff would be incredibly helpful if presented well, which is like some quick tips when you're looking for a top-level domain. Well, step one would be to just make the damn page, yeah. and then we'll continue to rev it. I would argue that we want the page to be, oh, just just pick a .dot org for now. Uh, and, yeah. You know, just and by the way, don't be afraid about picking some weird combination. Just get started. You can, yeah. guess what? You can buy another one. Yeah. You know, that yeah. kind of feedback, and then we'll have more and more. Details. Yeah, like it is very easy. Communicating, it's very easy to change your domain later. You're not locked in, like yeah. getting I, I, a username. I own ten domains, and I think that's pretty low compared to people in this room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have you. We hosted a domain swap for your domains okay, that you right. have that you <laughs> yeah. might want. Right. You've been holding on to, but aren't using, and you can. Yeah. So. so okay, so that's all that makes more sense. Um, as far as pay for hosting, again, I assume we are going to this. Just pay for hosting is really more the intent. We would just say you're going to need hosting. We recommend these two. It's just, it's just basically you need a domain, you need a host, and. Um, and again, OK with cPanel, it is, I guess the point is if you pick the right host, the cPanel interaction is really quite light. Uh, I think I think if we really are narrowing it down to two or three hosts, we can create the link to whatever their documentation is yeah. for setting up cPanel. And if they don't have it, that might be a sign that maybe we should link to them. No, absolutely. Can we capture that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, cPanel must have yeah. doc. Yeah. Yeah. Link to their doc. Um, and again, we're going to pick the ones that are most useful as the yeah. top two choices. Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost like this usability combination. Um, and it, this is going to sound very noobish, but it took me a while to realize that I needed to have two separate logins. One to my domain and one to WordPress. 
I kept confused yes. by that. I know it sounds so basic, but it was like, wait a second, who am I logging into again? Nope. And, and so a little discussion of that would be helpful too. When you say log into your domain, what do you mean? Log logging uh, into my cPanel. Yeah, logging into cPanel. So you actually mean log into your hosting. Right. Well, but you log into your hosting well, uh, and then no, you also have to log into cPanel. Well, actually this this is a good, the, the vocabulary yeah. is, is vague and confusing because you can log into your domain, you can log into your host, you can log into WordPress. You could log into your domain name registrar. Right. Yeah. It could also be someone separate. It could be someone yeah. different Which than your host. I do everything through Google Domains. So yes, I actually do domains separate from my host, separate from WordPress. That is another thing to address is maybe the fact that for a lot of people it's easier to get their domains through their host mm -hmm. if you want less shit to manage. Yes. So that might be worth bringing this, up. Uh, we can take, yes, please, Josh. Yeah. And you could also be logging into a service that you're running on your website. Agreed. If, yeah. if you did. Just, if you ran one. You just like making this hard. Don't yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just like, I like documenting so, the And this is where we link to password managers. Yeah. No, but so, it's just a little discussion about this so that, again, some gentle people might not quite be up to speed on how many well, years there are here. Yeah. So are, are there, I'm not, I mean, I saw posts, I don't, I'm not familiar with the web hosting landscape, but I would assume that there are hosts. <laughs> they self host, what do you mean? Like, I have a server in my basement. Okay, that's what I thought you meant, but I wanted to hear you say it. Yeah, so um, I would assume that there are, there are hosts out there where you can, they have both one click word and WordPress install and the domain, and the domain name is My the wife same, did it, I believe, right? through Squarespace. Yes. Yeah, so why, uh, can, can, can we here. just add that to the criteria and then mm. for, Let for me, like- The one thing I would say is some people already have domains that they're not using that they maybe bought. And so, um, that is useful. And the other thing I want to mention in addition to that is that some places that do the all-in-one solution make it really hard to, to transfer. That's yeah. kind of what I was going to get at, which and is to say we might don't want to steer people into traps. And given that we are talking about Gen 2 and not Gen 3, I think it's okay to make things slightly more difficult if you think it's the right thing to do. If it gives them more portability. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of like a concern of theirs. I would argue with that as well. So yeah, that's a core we... tenet of ours. Yeah. yeah. So whoever the, the domain versus hosting thing, I get. I feel like I have seen people that can't move their domains away from their hosting provider. Yeah. And they're, they're stuck with their hosting provider because they just it's like too hard for them. And again, we don't necessarily need to explain everything. We just need to say, well, you know, it's important for you to own your domain, make it easy to transfer. We suggest that you do this. Yeah. And then so so again, so we're talking about going back to the list. I love the fact that you have multiple domains. This is awesome. Um, get a domain name, pay for hosting, or uh, yeah, just hosting, and then um, cPanel, and then, uh, okay, and the, the last one is going to be, unfortunately, um, yeah, one click install of WordPress on cPanel. I'm sorry, five is going to be, um, I'll write this down myself here, five, five. Name, the worst. Uh, in, install indie web. Uh, oh, yeah, we do that before you pick the theme. Install indie web. That. Indie web. Uh, Plugins, right? Like, well, hopefully we can do it right. It's a single indie web plugin, right? So and the other question is: is known an option here? This flow right now, I thought was focused on just WordPress. We just wanted to finish that. Uh, this, I would, I would slightly generalize that to this flow is focused on things you can install from cPanel. Well, I think we're trying to come up with something that is a the Gen two ver. Yeah. What is the canonical instructions that we can hand out to someone to get them set up on any web if they are Gen 2? And we were specifically working on the WordPress instructions. I think we were, but you're right. We could genericize it and say, everybody needs a domain. Everybody needs a host. A web host. Right. And now, then you can now branch WordPress. Redo. I'm seeing a beautiful comic book website flowchart, but that's in my head. But everyone <laughs> needs a CMS. So each one of those is a branch. Everyone needs a domain. Here's two providers. Everyone needs a web host. Here's two providers. No. I, I, I understand that this is logical in your head, but you are about, I think you are describing something that is going to be a nightmare and scare people away unless we design it beautifully. It, in other words, it might be better to say the top level branch is with known or, or WordPress. Yeah. And then within Click. each one, we have duplicate steps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it just makes the top level branch so much lighter. As uh, soon as the, uh, it people sounds... see flowcharts and they get freaked out. Oh, I'm not, I wasn't talking about like visualizing it that way. That was just the like the, the like IA design. Well, and if if well, our checklists are small enough and they all link to sub pages, we won't be duplicating. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, th I think it's more about starting with the end result as opposed to starting any actual. 
that, that, that yeah, are, yeah. They provide a different experience. Like with well, with known gives you a lot more out of the box, but it's also I think a lot harder to customize. I, sure, I, I just mean that like what people are trying to do is they're trying to get the website. Yeah. To do that, you need a domain and the regist registrar and host. Yep. But you don't think, all right, I'm going to go get a domain first. Like, <laughs> like the, the goal the goal is I'm getting a website. Yeah. Right. So starting the flowchart with what website can I use is is starting with the the end goal in mind as mm -hmm. opposed to starting at the actual first step. So I think that's, I think that's what's gone. Uh, yeah, I, so I believe so. But let's, and let's the, the only with, the only right? downside is. How do we tell people if we don't think they really understand everything yet? How do we motivate them to choose with known versus WordPress? And I think that that is simple explanations of what the pros and the cons are of each. Yeah. That seem really, you know, kind of unbiased. Like, here's the two things that we suggest if you are they're ready for you. And in fact, are, yeah. I would even float that we have a little bit of a pain in them by saying, guess what? With known is super easy to set up. It's a little bit easier. A little bit more limited on the formatting options. Yes. With uh, you know, and then the alternative. WordPress is, is yeah. infinitely, it, it, yeah, but it has some security issues for some right. folks. And if you're uncomfortable, go with with known. Yeah. If, you know, if, you're, if you're a managed WordPress, there should be no security issues. Uh, I've I've gotten right? so much trouble that's with WordPress. Not true. Yeah, that depends. Yeah. Um, on really? What There's level they manage it at? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, I can do like a one-click install on um, GoDaddy, but then I can still install any plugin, any yeah. theme I want. Uh, there's other ones where and, and I mean, there's also comment comment spam is a huge problem, which can put but plan stuff and yeah. You should not will. To your point, I, I think what you understand is managed context is drastically better security. Yes, but um, now that auto updates for the core are, are out and soon for plugins, now like it's been pushed on. I guess I'm asking if, and maybe I just don't know the right questions to ask. Does DreamHost and or Reclaim when you click the one-click install on cPanel, it's not really managed. Does, does that mean that they will then update your WordPress core on that? All WordPress does that now. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. Um, um, all plugins are the, the bigger problem. Yeah. And so That's my problem. Yeah. I, I had WordPress, and I saw this really cool plugin. It seemed really cool. I plugged it in. I did it. came back the next day. My entire site was down because it took up so much memory. I couldn't even log in. It took the whole thing down. I had to go through tech support to have them log in and uninstall it, and I had no idea what the hell was going on. Yeah. That's why I don't like WordPress at times. Yeah, and I've, I've had similar I've had similar issues. And so uh, we don't need to dive into WordPress security issues. Yep. I think the next, so one of but the that's next. part of the opinions that we're talking so about, known versus WordPress, right? Well, I don't know if we need to establish the opinions in this session. Well, I, I would argue, though, that with known is probably the best. More secure. Well, so secure is a, is a loaded word. I'd less say hassle. it is less likely to shoot yourself in the foot with yeah. them. I would agree too. And so, so they're put it first I mean, because one, of that. one way to phrase that I, it seems like don't discuss the specific issues, just say like you might have to contact technical support sometimes with WordPress. But sometimes I'm sorry, yes. No, just like one thing with WordPress, um, when I've worked with people who aren't as tech savvy, I guess, is there's a lot of support for it. Like you can go online, you can find an article. How do I do this on WordPress? No, it's a lot you. newer. Yeah. So I don't know that I can go online and say, how do I do this thing with known, and that I'm going to actually find something. I, non to somebody to help. Yeah, non indie web specific, but Ghost is a great example of like, I tell people like, even if you like Ghost, I if you're uncomfortable, you might want to go to with WordPress simply because there's so much more documentation. And with Ghost, you're kind yeah. of stuck with the two people that blog about it and that do documentation. But to me, the big difference is that I think there's a huge category of people we're appealing to here that don't. Want to solve problems. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just really want the damn thing to work. Despite and, community, they but, don't want us to deal with it. They, well, well they, they just want they want it to go. They just yeah. want it to go. That's all. They don't want their top thing that they have to worry about to be their website, right? right. Like it's fun for a lot of us, but it's like they right. want it to solve the problems that anybody. So this this to me is really making it clear as to how we want to phrase with known versus WordPress. Yes. I still am going to be a WordPress person, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So. But anyway, to be known as more out of the box, yeah, exactly. to be WordPress is more powerful. That's yeah. exactly that's that's, that's all we're saying. Is that a t is general enough? Yeah, and I, I, I think that's good. And I think if in the design of the website we can have short questions, and then it's like, do you want to learn more? And we can have a separate standalone page that actually weighs pros and cons, or right. yeah. does like feature I, comparison. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm if, I, if I can come in, please. Yeah. Um, I don't agree with. 
um, known always being easier, especially coming out of the box. Last time I set it up, I had to download a plugin from a GitHub repository because there's no plugin uh, <coughs> list on the website. Download it from the GitHub repository, then had to FTP that to a specific folder on my known installation before I ever got um, Twitter hooked up, for instance, which is definitely not a problem with WordPress. So if FTPing anything is already a big negative, known is definitely not there on every level. Having that set up known, I can't speak to that. I, I was in the impression that with known worked with most things out of the box. Anybody else? It does, and I, I do think that that's been like actively improved. Like I think Ben has deployed a ton of stuff. Okay, like point nine nine is out. Okay, let's make a note of that, and, make, and if the problem is fixed, are we okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this this was two weeks ago. Yeah, I think two, three weeks ago, maybe. This is a great expression, though, of let's the take, let's Gen take. 2 problem of you're relying on people's fun side pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so make, there's a problem. Action. You've got to I want to make, take some action items at the bottom. So uh, say check with Ben yeah. on Twitter integration. So there, I mean, something that came up there was like, okay, Twitter integration, no one, no one stepped up and said, is Twitter integration core? So it seems like we accept that, like, Cross-posting to Twitter is is something that needs to happen. Is it worth like listing out some of the features that are that we consider must-haves for Gen two people? I believe to say like these things, these flows must work. Like these these uh, options. That's, that's a good question. Exist. I, I think that the, the easier that it is to set up Posse and Backy, and that that makes a big difference because that is one that is one of the like visionary selling points of like going indie web, and frankly, the difference between say indie web and like the RSS Adam Wars of the early 2000s. Right. So, like, so Posse and Backfeed being easy to set up and, and work well is like. I mean, I'm kind of like speaking from a speaking for Gen two here, but let me, I mean, ask like, do you think setting up Posse and Backfeed is a pain in the ass? Is essential. Oh, um, that's a good question. It was for me. I'm not sure that it would be for everyone, but I think um, I think one of the key selling propositions does make it end up being important. But for me, a key selling proposition was being able to search my history, and that's also how I get a lot of other people excited about IndieWeb um, because because Facebook search and Twitter search is so terrible. So I think that there's a lot to be said for Posse being a really powerful marketing tool for us. Having that set it up, though, let me ask: How hard is it today, from scratch, to install the plugin for WordPress or with Known, and to cross-post to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? Because my understanding is you have to do quite a bit of work. Like you've got to do something on Twitter to like link back, or you know, there's like a realme link or something. So th there's it is not just simply oh, here's your password, you're done. There's there's quite a few steps involved, correct? Yeah. Do you want me to talk you through what I did for Twitter on Known sure. a couple of weeks ago? Make the video work? Uh, I, I don't have anything to show you, and my bandwidth is limited. So That's why you're like, go, go for it. I, go who, who else has set up Known? Because the, the experience you're describing, Martin, is not something that I know everyone has had. So I, I believe that... I think Chris, uh, Chris, is your audio working? I don't know. Can you hear me? Can you hear you, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Chris, you said um, known with Posse and Backfeed, right? So known is a little harder if you're going to self-host, but they've built a product called Convoy that's, I want to say, 60 bucks a year that builds all that stuff in automatically. So you literally click a button and you're connected to Twitter automatically for Posse. And then the only other thing you're doing is setting up a Bridgie account for the Backfeed part. So that, that piece is solved and really easy, but if you want to save yourself that amount of money, you really need to be a developer to do what he's talking about and you know set up the four or five plugins for Posse to the three or four locations you want to set it up to. So that's what I'm talking about. The, the com so that, that part's harder, but, the, com but the, com the company has built a product to make that stupidly easy. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's probably almost... Button. Almost as easy as installing any WordPress plugin, if not easier. So. Very true, but I think Convoy is going away. So what? Yeah. Well, no. What they're doing is they're going to take Convoy out of the 
primary repo because uh, self hosters aren't using it and they're trying to pare down the amount of code and the code base that's in the open source version. But as a company, what they're selling as a product is going to have that baked in from day one, is my understanding. Similarly, there's Jetpack on the WordPress side, yes. which I would expect yeah. to see that more of these services bundled into Jetpack over time. So what I'm, what I'm hearing is it's one thing to go to the host and to get WordPress or with Node installed. It's another thing to make sure that all the right plugins are installed. And it's yet a third thing to go through all the accounts and so forth to get the links slash, you know. Right. You know, And so that's the kind of stuff that we would have to put into the stock. Because it, it is going to be a few steps to get this. Done. Unless so when there's a choice between like fewer steps and like doing it for free but more steps, yeah. I'm going to say for Gen 2, we should push the fewer steps. Yes. And we can, we can all the like do it yourself for free open sourcey stuff is like great. Develop, we have great on ramps for developers to do that. Absolutely. And, but that's not the that's not the home page focus. Okay, so that, so that so it sounds to me like we we have some work to, to, to talk about with this convoy. First of all, we have to verify convoy is going to be viable going forward. Mm -hmm. Second of all, we have to then document how to do. Or it. ask what's the solution for known self hosting. Right. Then the question is for WordPress now. What is the convoy equivalent for WordPress? Now that I've got the WordPress plugin installed. How do we go through and set up Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? So, and this is Bridgie. And Bridgie. So you've got to do Bridgie for a lot of these things to be helpful if you're trying to set up Posse and Backbeat. And because of that, Bridgie needs its own. You need to link to the Bridgie tutorials because it's it's totally doable for a Gen 2 person. It's not hard, it but it does require you to set up API access and Facebook and like, uh -huh. you know, you, you've got to do a little bit of work. Yeah, so the nice thing is it, uh, it lets something else drive it. So known, for example, um, uh, you, you don't have to go to Bridgie, like know to go to Bridgie. Uh, Known's basically like wizard set up. It's just like, click here to go to Bridgie and you know, it, it's going to ask for access to your Facebook. It'll send you right back to known so you don't it's it's to kind of stays within that known flow, yeah. uh, and so other we can make WordPress do this too. We just haven't yet, so that's oh, what I think. I like that. Yeah, that's is that a your really good for tomorrow? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can do that. Hey, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try to capture that action item here. Um, to uh, WordPress, uh, what we'll call that WordPress. It's going to integrate Bridgie sign up. I love it. And that would be with. And Bridgie is definitely default in known for self-hosting. I just want to put that out there. So posseeing, going to Twitter isn't default in there, but Bridgie for bringing stuff to your website is default in the known self-host. So Backbeat is default. Yes. Well, okay, then this sounds to me like if we get the WordPress plugin to install the other plugins, take care of the static page, and then do the Bridgie login, that's gonna make it really nice. <laughs> it's going to make WordPress a whole lot easier here. Um, it's, as far as, it's been so long since I set this up. Once you get Bridgie, what about Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Do those all come for free or don't you like load at each one? So, well, it depends on how you're doing posseing. So, posse isn't, you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's a posse mechanism within the <coughs> web WordPress kit right now. Because I'm using Snap, but Snap is not part of the IndieWeb package. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. that's right. Typically, folks on WordPress use something else to do the posse. Yeah. So. Because those pre-existed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you probably and might be in it. I thought there was a that was specific. It. Yeah. The, the easiest way is Jetpack um, for for quick, stupid posse. You, you know, as its drawbacks, but it's done automatically. So if you have a Jetpack set up. It's literally click a button to authorize Facebook, click a button to authorize um, Twitter, and then it's done. Whereas Snap at the other is at the other end of the spectrum where you've got to put in authorization keys and do a lot more setup. So yeah, you have um, to find and then absolutely. and then within that, there's a handful of um, uh, you know standalone apps that will allow you to do posse to things like Twitter or Facebook. Um, but uh, most people typically aren't going to do that, or they're going to want the f you know four or five big um, silos in an integrated experience, which is what Jetpack kind of does. 
So just to be clear, what we're talking about is you have a little small micro blog post on your own website. It will go to all four of these things, and then you get all the, the back channel links to likes and replies. And so we're just as long as you have Bridgie set up. So if you have Bridgie and the Anyweb Pack and Jetpack, right. all three of those, then you will be able to do all the things. Okay. Um, there's there's also Bridgie Publish. How easy is it to use Bridgie Publish for posseying? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so your site has to have good microformats, um, which is a problem with yeah. WordPress. It has to have working microformats. Um, then it's pretty good. And so there's a the, the Bridgie Publish plugin works well. Um, if you yeah if, if you have broken microformats, you got other problems. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen to comments, but I'm not seeing it show up. Uh, this is the new web room? Yeah. Um, another, so the question I have is what we need to explain what these things are doing. Yeah. Um, so like people might be sold and they're like, okay, I'll click all these things, but they need to know what posse is doing and they need to have so the question is like how much do we sublink to pages or you know like do we do a mouse over that defines terms like which well, i think would be really beautiful it seems well, like also there are a lot of ways to fall off the road here because it's it, there's a lot of steps yeah, yeah. this I, sounds like a weekend project at this point i almost feel like there should also be a, a very nice faq that's like i posted but it's not on twitter what's wrong and, and kind of like breaking that down for each of those steps. Like, I'm not seeing comments back. I, so I do think about, a troubleshooting page. We've got about 13 minutes left, and I want to like roll this way back higher level, because we've deep dove in on a sub page of what we actually, what I actually want to discuss, which is this. This is the home page right now, and this is very much directed at, say, Gen one and a half at this point. Um, which is fine, but like the question, the, the framing question still is, how do we redesign and reauthor or copy edit this page yeah. to be targeted at Gen two? Well, so getting started, mm -hmm. the like all we talked about so far is, if you're already sold and you're Gen two, yeah. what are the steps to get started? And that's a, a lot, tiny fraction right. of what the thing page is. All that's I would say is, thing. if we if we don't have a so let's say we convince them, and it's still too much work. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Yep. All right. Good night. I absolutely agree with you. I think that both problems are important. In other words, let's say we address your problem and we get them convinced and they have to go through hell to do it. We haven't really bought much. Right? Well, that's kind of where we are today, honestly. Yeah. I think that if you're a Gen 2 person, this at least makes some sense to you, yeah. especially with these bullet points. Yep. But then I, as soon as you click any link, you're, you're like lost. Well, I kind of like Lillian's point early on, which was like these three points are nice and high level. It's almost like, like the Gen 2. I think these are very high level. These are incredibly high level. I, I'd actually argue we could go lower level. I think we need a negative framing landing page, not yeah. the main one, but I think we need to do the like, what what's wrong with what's wrong with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and algorithms? How do well, you fix we it for we hint, we hint at it here. We could argue we could go more negative. I was going to say Maybe these, not from. these. I would argue the content. Is that a weird echo? Is that a, is that someone is talking in the background? Someone in the background, or is that oh, someone okay. actually talking? Oh, that's. A, as a background thing. Okay. Yeah, background. background. Yeah. So I would argue these are all very abstract. And uh, to me, what would be helpful, and I'm postulating this, I think that's what you were saying, uh, to have a much stronger statement of what does this look like? How is your life going to be better to say you've got a web page, you're posting here, it goes to all these websites, and it all comes back? Is okay. someone catching this on the Etherpad? Because that's a perfect expression. Um, so I, I'm putting in action items, which is to say, um, Need. Uh, uh, well, do we like even need to change the like? What is the indie web like definition? Yeah, I noticed in all of those things. Marketing would be nice. All of those things at the top. There's nothing about like you need to own your domain. I actually, that's a good point. I think the top level one, people focus on terms of the corporate web, just sounds like a Molotov cocktail to me. Just like yeah, yeah, yeah it's gotten quoted a lot. Like the the news love it. The like journalists like love that quote. Well, then, in contrast. But then I would then maybe in a second line. The indie web is a people focus alternative to corporate web. Yes. And like it, it, it's like this, like stake in the ground. Yeah. That they love to contrast. I would just 
like I just what does it mean? And to me, it's like own your content, push it everywhere else. Like you are now the center of the universe. But you yeah. need like a, a statement so, that's one third the size of that. That's but, like has well, that has a punch. I think that one of the important things that we need to do is focus on the user in the way that we market this and what they're gaining out of it. And I don't, I think that we do not do that as well here. Um, and I think one of the, uh, I think a beautiful example of something that caught a lot of steam was moving your money. Uh, a couple of years ago, a lot of people moved their money from big corporate banks to credit unions. And the marketing, I think, was very in line with like, hey, this is a thing that I'm doing. It takes me a little bit of work, but I'm doing it because I have these core values and blah, 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 blah. And a lot of people kind of glommed onto it as like a New Year's resolution thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be that kind of framing, I think, could be very positive for us and we can Possibly, if we're prepared, we can ride the next wave of algorithm changes that piss people off. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yes, so it, it, it almost sounds to me like, honestly, what we want to do is come up with three or four alternatives, um, and then just start get people to, to edit it and so forth. Because I do like this slightly edgy, slightly negative Facebook sucks kind of framing, and say, guess what? If you have all of your data in this one, all of your content in one spot, look at all the things that happen. You can search it. You can push it everywhere. All your comments. That's positive. Very well. You start off with a like, yeah. you, then you say, and by the way, here's a nice positive solution. You know? Yeah. And so to me, that's the kind of thing that would go below those three values. I think the if I'm just chiming, the thing that I think you got to frame it at is a problem that you're solving for someone that uses Twitter and or Facebook. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you don't know what that problem is, then you can't frame it because as much as as long as I've been reading these and looking at this and I'm involved in it, it's still seems a very nerdy and geeky thing that you want to do. Unless you have a problem that you're trying to solve for someone, then it's going to be hard to make that leap to why I would make an investment to do that. What's the pain point to journalists and bloggers, right? Like, if we're not immediately addressing the pain, point to the pain points to journalists and bloggers, then we're not A simple, pa simple pain point is you're creating a lot of content in a place where it's hard to retrieve it. And that, yes. I mean, I think that's the key. That, that's a very succinct way of putting it. So create content where you control it. Yeah. It's, it's your content, yeah. keep it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love it. Yeah. That's a really good slogan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, so, that's an example of something to replace the Indian web is that people focus on threads and corporate threads. Yeah. Because that to me doesn't feel like it resonates with journalists and bloggers. But we can even put that possibly as the second line. Yeah. It's your content, keep it. Yeah. And so, and then we can call out by doing this, this is what you get. Searchability. And, and honestly, ability. that should replace these three bullet points. I, that I should mean, replace the, this is so abstract, I don't see that this actually benefits the journalists and bloggers, and instead the three bullet points of like, you get searchability, you get this, this. Can this. we throw some indie web money at a comic artist that we like? to illustrate this in a cute way, like feed them the content, because I think reading this in a way that breaks it down of like, what do you gain? Like, you know, have you ever, and then like, you know, someone being like, have you ever tried to find your old posts about cats on Facebook? Yeah, right. and, you know, and like, I think if we approach this from what is the most delightful thing that yeah. we would want to see if we'd never heard of IndieWeb, and then try to create that yep. with documentation, yeah. we'll end up in a really good place. Yeah, I mean, I would also I argue. Do you think that we need that? That's just that's a sub-level page. It, well, it's also. Page, right? I would argue. I think it's homepage, but okay. I. But it's, it has to. It has to be good enough to be homepage. I would also argue we have a little bit of arguing ourselves to make sure that we get the right edginess, the shortness right, and then we, we give that as input, inspiration to the artist. I agree. I think, yeah. What? How about we just do this? Honestly, the, the, the points you just said, if you're so you keep it and you search it, are really just edgier versions of these points. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so all we're going to do then is just rewrite these things to be a little bit more biting. That would be great. And they, and they make these more concrete, too. That's make it, them, there's make a lot them of link hand wavy stuff in, in these. Yeah. To your totally point earlier. You need to sh demonstrate yeah. what the problem is and then show that we're a solution. Here's demonstrate the, the problem, yeah. show yeah. we're a solution. As someone who came to this like two months ago and just kind of showed up at a home web club and yeah, didn't know yeah. what this was and I've never heard of any web before, it took me a while to look through this site and figure out, like, mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I see yeah. these ideas and like that sounds really cool. But like 
what does this actually mean? I'm a technical person and I had trouble yeah. digging really in and really finding like, yeah. okay, I'm a technical person, I like this, I want to do it. What, do, what am I actually agreeing that I want to do to my right. site? <laughs> <laughs> build it myself, but what do I build? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm building a new site and I want to make it follow all of this because yeah. it sounds really cool, but what, is that? Okay, yeah. so what does that mean? We're running out of time. Can we take a couple action items? So like open up a shared document and have two or three people take, take a shared stab at it. Maybe even like do it as a hack session tomorrow to see if we can actually do I'm, some copy I'm, editing. Yes, I'd be happy yeah, to be up for it. I mean, especially since you have that like new person, fresh experience in your head. Yeah, that would be great. So if we could go ahead and take a step on it tomorrow, that would be lovely. Yeah, and then we try to get it done tomorrow for you. So we have like four minutes left. I think we already covered the join part, which is like the, the three steps of like this is about community right now, and like you just you all talked about making it practical. Yeah. Domain, web host, cPanel, install, right. Right. go, and you're 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 off and running. Yeah, and maybe the community stuff is secondary. What do y'all think? The community stuff. Um, what do you like, mean by community stuff? This is all community stuff. Community. Join the indie web right now is very community. Yeah, yeah. centric. No. I think we no. should frame it as like like it solves all these problems. Oh, and by the way, there's like all these. Yeah, no, well, yeah, help. drop in. You can, yeah, there's right. resources available if you get stuck. But I, I After think. After this gets set up. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I think okay. finding a way for them to engage in their own time. That's something I got stuck on. Like, I could oh, yeah. find so much about the community. Yeah. Like, I could get on oh, Slack. I could find things about it. But it was that getting started that just took a lot of digging to get yeah. into right. So get started before joining the, before joining the community. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and the community right. is right. always there. It's to be there, but it's just, like, because that's a yeah. So would it be fair to summarize that as explain it to me like I'm a webmaster? <laughs> uh, no, because journalists no. and bloggers don't consider yeah, themselves ex webmasters. Explain it to me like I'm a confident internet user who is not an expert. Well, well actually, what I'm hearing is two completely separate and important problems. One is to describe this problem so that journalists and bloggers actually want to go into the trouble. Yeah. And, and then two, minimize the trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right now there is way too much trouble and it's way too abstract. They're just, yeah. they're just parallel problems. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of wanted like the get started now to be more prominent on the site. Yep. Um, Got it. It's like I could really yeah. see the problems. Got but it. Not. I, well, next, yeah. next section, because we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, I put this on here, the beyond blogging and decentralization, because so many people would come to IndieWeb.org and then would post about it. Oh, this is just like RSS in the 2000s or something like that. Like, we already did all that. And it's like, no, you didn't. It's very different. So this was there to just have something to point people to and discover because so many people came to the wrong conclusion. Yeah. The question is, are we solving a non problem? Can we cut this out? Can we move it somewhere else? I think we might be able to solve that problem with better copy. Yeah, this, argue, this strikes me as being a, a bit broad. And it's not quite sure that those people would still read it. I okay. also, I'm, I think I'm with many other folks in my dislike of the word self dog food. Got it. It, it seems <laughs> like we could. It seems like right now this is this is solving your problem that like people come and well not your problem but like the problem that people come and are like oh this has been done before but and it's not really that's dead people. And yeah, this is for dead. Yeah. yeah. So we can cut it. It seems like okay. Done. It Next. seems like we could, well, wait, wait, so if we can make that smaller and have it be a part of the community and say, like, we have, like, we're a strong community that has, like, values and we stick to them and that's what guides us, like, just, just like, two sentences or something, right, so in the it, previous section. Right. Yeah, this is, I think, one of the things that I read that and I immediately go, like, oh, this is in direct response to other open source communities and if you don't know about open source communities, you have no idea what, what yeah. And you don't care about the open source doctrine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or you don't want to like assume that there has been drama and therefore it needs to be talked about on the page. <laughs> Which is kind of what I read into that is like, oh, like, oh what am I getting into? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's presupposed drama. Events. Uh, so we have like the Homebrew Website Club and Indie Web Camp as prominent on the homepage because honestly, that's how this whole thing started. Yeah. Do we need that? Do Gen 2 people care that there is a community with like active events behind um, us? Yes, but not in this way. This yeah. is too yeah. much text, yeah. and also it's insanely yeah. challenging to find the actual events. Oh, God. <laughs> what if we have two, two sections for the community? One is like uh, um, essentially what, what the. We scroll up. 
IRL versus... Well, there's this. The first is, like, the better version of that, right? Yep. Um, and then the second is, like, sort of more developer-focused and is, like, um, you know, we, we stick to our guns with these principles, like, here's and here's the, the meetups where that happens. I feel like that's the kind of thing you put at the bottom. Every developer I've seen go yeah, on his home pages, absolutely. like goes, oh, there's just fluffy user stuff at the top, and then they go scroll to the bottom. Straight to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I've just seen them do it over and over and over. I'm guilty oh, hey, of that very before, well. before I forget, um, one thing that right. really bothers me about this home page is that there's no login button. Can um, we fix that? Yeah, we need like, to fix it. Yeah. Well, it, it, there is one, but it's all the way at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that was your right. issue to the bottom. It belongs in the bottom, right? What? You're a dev. It belongs in the bottom. <laughs> You'll find it. Most people, I don't think that. The next question is who needs to log in? Yeah. Right, that's true. Can we yeah. get rid of it as a wiki? <laughs> yeah, that's another point entirely. Um, <laughs> that's just the tools, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so but if, if we're running out of time, who wants to meet with me tomorrow to get started on this? I want to do a hack session on this. Yeah, I, I, at least you and I. That would be great. Well, let's just, let's start with that. Okay. I, I mean, you're completely, I'd love to hear I'm, your voice. I'm point. interested yeah. in it, but I have a goal, and I don't know if that goal is going to take five minutes or all day. So what if, we, what if we time box it with like one hour of like copy editing and design? Because I think we have enough ideas captured and see what we get. Absolutely. And then we can just post that as like a brainstorm and. and then I might want a sharpie a comic. Who nice. Big bigger comic. Cool. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. That was really helpful. I think we have like enough to potentially do an iteration tomorrow. I'm excited. My only, absolutely, completely excited. I am worried that we came up with an awful lot of things off topic that should be lost, which is improvements to the uh, indie web plugin for WordPress. There was a couple of notes in here. Yeah, that made it into notes. It made it into notes, but I'm worried it's not going to make it into. It, this is a co about copy editing, so it's not going to go into the WordPress thing. So, we can move it into the WordPress thing. Maybe we should. Yeah. Because yeah. I just, I feel like... And, and and I miss David's here. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe David wasn't here. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't here. <laughs> you know what what I just came here, here about... One of the action minutes. items uh, was there should be, for example, a Bridgie sign-up within the plugin. And Ryan's yeah. down to build that tomorrow if you're interested uh, in building it. Bridgie can actually be... Yeah. 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 We'll take this up on Yeah. yeah. No, I would. I'll talk to him about it. It was yeah. something we talked about at one point. Well, we just assigned it to yeah. him. We're, we're going to end up writing optimistic copy that's like how we wish well, we, we with known <laughs> uh, with <laughs> known and WordPress work. Yeah. And then when someone tries to actually user test it and runs into a roadblock, we're going to file bugs. Yeah. yeah. So that's the iterative process. Yeah.